you mentioned looking ahead to the Big 12 conference slate. A lot of folks excited about the Big 12 this year, but you don't want to look past a team like Northwestern State. Their record perhaps a little misleading at 3-10, and 10, but they've been playing a lot of guarantee games yeah. before they head into Southland Conference play. Yeah, you definitely can't overlook any opponent because that's how you come here and get beat. Experience that my senior year, we overlooked Texas Southern and Stephen F. Austin and took two bad losses in the same year. Stephen F. Austin back then out of the Southland Conference, these days out of the WAC. Meanwhile, Northwestern State, they were here in 2013, and a Jalen West, a young standout for them back then, sent this game to overtime. They do have one win against Baylor in their prior nine meetings. Adam Flagler, the junior, out of Georgia. As Baylor able to strike first. Take a look at the starting five for Northwestern State. It includes Carvel Tset, whom they were without the opening semester, but he really changes the look offensively for this group. Put up 15 points against Texas A&M in College Station seven days ago, the last time these demons stood it up. Meanwhile, long two off the baseline won't go down for Jalen King. And meanwhile, for Baylor, Jeremy Sampson, I mean Jeremy Sohan, gets the start tonight after cutting the locks. No second chance points there for Baylor. I see what you did, that was super creative. He got the haircut. He came straight over to King McClure almost to get a stamp of approval. <laughs> Look, I approve it. I didn't like all the, the, the floppiness, but I like what he's rocking now. Akinjo loses his defender and able to knock down the stroke. It's a 5 nothing start for Baylor. Of course, Baylor coming off wins over Alcorn State and at Oregon most recently. A tough schedule for the Bears and yet somehow sit 11-0 among the five undefeated. Even if they had picked up a loss with their challenging schedule in non-conference play, they would have been okay with it. But it's going to be a gauntlet once they do enter Big 12 play this year. And the Big 12 is going to be just as tough as it has ever been. Look at teams like Iowa State, teams you probably didn't think would ever be good again. And those guys are rocking at number eight in the country, undefeated. Tough matchup this week. Otterberg has done a great job of turning that program around. Undefeated, number eight in the country. They were picked dead last in the Big 12 entering the season. Meanwhile, Baylor, the defending national champs, were picked third in the Big 12. That's, that's crazy. Open look. And the shot just won't go down off the front iron from Cedric Garrett, the transfer out of Murray State. They're excited about what Garrett's going to give them when they get into conference play with some great size at 6-5. Meanwhile, it's a 7-0 start for Baylor. I like that for Kendall Brown right there. Being able to get to the cup while he has a defender on his hip. His birthday today, one of his players, Carson uh, Carvel Tset's birthday, but... There, he is one of the eight longest tenured Division I basketball coaches in the country. 23 years at the helm of Northwestern State. Oh, wow. Even led them to that 2006 victory over three-seed Iowa in the first round of the NCAA tournament. Northwestern State has picked third entering the Southland this year. It's a new look Southland after part of the conference split off to join the new look WAC. Oh, Mid-range stroke, still looking for the opening points. Is that one off the mark from Brian White? A local product from Natchitoches, Louisiana. Location of Northwestern State. Balance scoring so far, and that's just not fair. <laughs> Flagler lobs it up for the easy dime. And Kendall Brown does the rest, your preseason freshman of the year in the Big 12. He's definitely played like the preseason freshman of the year. I don't know if any freshman in the 12 has played better than Kendall Brown. Looking for that advantage, a little help, and ultimately Baylor able to crash the boards after the miss from Coleman. That's tough. On the opposite end, good for the baseline as another one goes down for Akinjo. Of course, James Akinjo, one of your newcomers after Baylor lost all but one of its starters from its national championship last year. Akinjo comes over after being all Pac-12 at Arizona. One of three players on the Naismith Award watch list for Scott Drew's Bears. And 
Baylor off to an 11-0 start. A couple of those field goals from this man. Thamba, full oh, 15 footer, good. Lo Thamba with the mid-range jumper showing his, his stroke from the midi. And Northwestern State's had a full week off. That's time suited up before Christmas. Hope everybody tuning in, enjoying their holidays. And there's your first two points of the night for the Demons, courtesy of Jalen King, the sophomore. Good cut right there. Pick up the ball. You must move without the basketball in order to get easy buckets. King had a nice outing against AM. Had not hit a three-pointer all season, but knocked down both of his efforts from beyond the arc over in College Station. Northwestern State was able to play the Aggies close. A battle for the offensive board. Goes the way of Baylor. Flagler, catch, release. And the triple is good. Won't miss two in a row. Adam Flagler, elite shooter. Has to be the second one go in. Hitting better than 30% of his shots from beyond the arc this year. Well, Scott Drew is going to bring in a couple of fresh white uniforms. Northwestern State's going to double that effort with four men coming in off the bench in a moment. Mike McConathy, when he's got the depth he wants, will go literal line changes, a wave of five men, five out. Doesn't quite have that depth this year. And again, Baylor, they're going to have size advantages on a lot of teams at the power five level, let alone against their south of the bow. And they try to take advantage there with the alley-oop to Brown off the mark. And on the opposite end, transition three won't fall for T-Set. And Carvel T-Set celebrating his birthday in Waco tonight. Oh. I'm not saying it's the haircut. <laughs> And meanwhile, able to keep his attention, Kendall Coleman, the Shreveport freshman, been on about 15 to 20 pounds of muscle this year. And Scott Drew's men slow it down. It's an 11 0 start for Baylor tonight. Zohan. And Jeremy Sohan out of England. Went to school in Germany. last year in the Ferrell Center. One man not on his bench tonight, Dave Simmons back at home. Want to wish a happy holidays back to Coach Simmons. His second stint as an assistant with Northwestern State. As Baylor started to slow down, they've hit just one of their last seven shots. Both of their last five. A little no-look pass, still winds up with Sohan. Ten to shoot. And credit the Demons again. They subbed in four new bodies, creating a lot of traffic here. The long two for Akinjo. And the rebound winds up in the lap of Sarabi Genti from the Republic of Georgia. Yeah, I don't like that shot right there by Akinjo. That long two. Step back, get the three, or scoot up a little bit closer right there. Long two with the foot on the line. Not a great shot. Northwestern State seen an increase in international players on their roster. Have a couple of young men from Greece this year. Get a look there at Jonathan Chamwa Chachua. Mentioned Carvel T set after the end of this past semester, able to step in with his teammates and knock down shots like that one. A four-time state champion out of Baton Rouge in Louisiana. Knocked down three triples against the Aggies. Knocks down his first tonight. Picking up where he left off. Sohan with a kick out to the corner. How much Chachua will keep it alive. Yeah. Couple of bigs. Jonathan gets the look, won't go down. The rebound by Larry Owens, preseason second-team all-conference in the Southland, comes off the bench this year for Northwestern State, one of just two returning starters for Mike McConaughey's men from a year ago. 
Northwestern State's going to kick off its January by playing conference opponents in a non-conference tournament over in Katy, Texas, at the same arena where they will play their conference tournament in March. It's called the Merrill Center Home. This past decade and cut. But the hair was nice though. He has very nice hair. You know, I wish I could have hair like that, but I'm feeling the cut. He just got to get some waves in the hair, and it'll be really smooth. But it won't be hard for him. How much quicker though is his pregame prep now? <laughs> Doesn't have to get the curls popping before the game. So well, three-point play for Mr. Kinjo, who now comes off for Adam Flagler, one starter for the other. Baylor with a modest press to greet the Demons. Oh, nice feed. And ultimately, that one leads Genty right to the rim, the sophomore with an easy two. That was a great pass right there from Bree. Great post feed. Good angle to set his man up with an easy layup. LT Reed, LaTerrence Reed with the assist there. One of your two returning starters for Northwestern State this season. The team that made it to the second round of the Southland Conference Tournament last year in Katy, Texas, outside of Houston. Now Machachua can't get it to go. That's another rebound for Larry Owens. He's set with the ball. Basically has the green light. Any shot he's comfortable with. Been able to avoid the travel. And bailed out. Last touch by Baylor with 11 to shoot. So not only Baylor with the nation's longest win streak of 17, but no game has been closer than eight points against the Bears. Certainly not the national championship last year. Yeah. And uh, take a look at all of the streaks for Baylor. Last one against the AP top 10. Again, they go out, challenge uh, as tough as anybody. Ooh. And a nice stroke from T set. Mentioned he knocked down three of those against the Aggies, has two here in the opening half. T set starting to get busy with a tough jumper right there over the longer defender. He set is a second year freshman. <laughs> that sounds so weird to say, a second year freshman. You can be hearing it for a few years. <laughs> Tom Chachua with the pivot. <laughs> the pride of Cameroon. Played for the NBA Global Academy in Australia. Started off at UNLV before making his way to Waco. Reed with the long outlet pass, a little too tall for t -Sick. Good look, though. Coming off the ball screen. Well, a moment ago from Mr. t -Sick on his birthday. t -Sick putting on a show for his birthday. Knocking a trade down over Kendall Brown, the longer defender. Tough shot right there. He's not going to have a lot of guards as big as Mr. Brown guarding him once he gets into conference play. Not at all. Transition opportunity, t -Sick. Everything but the bucket. Uh, Demons have numbers back defensively. Quick release from Turner is good. Jordan Turner with the sweet stroke. I like seeing Jordan Turner out there. He provides another long athletic body for Baylor. Gives them versatility, and that's what they need. He just needs to get his confidence going. Baylor has doubled up Northwestern State here midway in the opening half. Flagler will tack on a pair. He's got eight points already in this first half. Baylor, meanwhile, out-rebounding Northwestern State 19-6. to No need for a rebound on that last shot. And we are about to see Mike McConathy go with a fresh five off the bench. Oh, Machachua bumping Turner <laughs> off the rebound. Yeah, he wasn't sharing that board at all. He wanted that number. No look to Jonathan. Oh. oh. Did he get a haircut? <laughs> oh, into Owens. Good. 
The assist from T set. T set can hoop. Don't get it twisted, people. But T set is good. This guy's elite level guard, probably one of the better guards in the in the South. Again, comes down to Baton Rouge. Mentioned, finished every one of his four seasons in high school with a victory. Owen State glued to Flagler, but Flagler able to knock that one down. I like the aggressiveness from Adam. I think he is so good, so good on the offensive end, and we really haven't seen it. We saw a little glimpse at Oregon in the first half, but he's super talented on the end. Look out. Baylor's made four of his last five shots. Make it one. Everybody had time to get in their naps after big meals over Christmas. Just now emerging from those comas. To see that Baylor, no surprise, sits at number one. Uh, take a look at all the first place votes. As Baylor now 45 straight weeks in the top 25, let alone top 10. And, of course, back at number one for a third straight year. Dohan pushes it forward. And free throws coming up for Akinjo. Kinjo's been in this starting lineup for Scott Drew each and every night. Matthew Meyer missing his first start this evening. Mention Jeremy Sohan in his place. You know, it's still football season. There's that, still that one football game on the schedule for Baylor over in Louisiana. Big game, big game. Kinjo. Look forward to listening to John Morris and the Baylor radio crew call that one from the Sugar Bowl against Lane Kiffin's Rebels of Ole Miss. The job Dave Veranda's done. I mean, Scott Drew with men's basketball. We've seen the expectations for every other program these days at Baylor. As Northwestern State taking it straight to the rim. Uh, during that last time out, Mike McConaughey did reinsert all five starters. And the Demons back within 16. Uh, and a power dribble gets stripped away by Garrett. Here at the transfer from Murray State goes the rim, bucket goes, and a free throw first of the night coming up for Northwestern State. Get another look at the determination from the Demon. Good take right here. Tough drive, dropped his head. Good hand one. The Northwestern State team that was within eight points. The final seven minutes against AM. Mike McConaughey points out. Only got to the line for seven free throws. They only hit three of those seven free throws. Could have helped themselves. A nice screen sets up the open look from the corner. And making good on it again, James Akinjo. Fourth triple for Baylor as a team. First time Akinjo knocks one down. Northwestern State came into Waco, picked up a 65-60 victory in 1997. Ooh. And Akinjo started to catch fire, back-to-back -back triples. As Baylor's made its last four shots on a 6-0 run. That was impressive right there, coming off the down screen, able to get his feet set. Great shot, Akinjo. I had some static. Did our producer call that shot before it happened, or were they just talking about the previous one? At least it was the previous one. Oh. But, but you know what? Let's, let's, I, get, let's give it a credit. I was going to let you I, give I think Sarah she called credit. The Sarah, you, you got it. You called it. I'm giving you a credit. <laughs> he can read the body language. Now she says her name is Claire. <laughs> Kick out to Flagler. A little strong. Akinjo trying to go three for his last three. Yes, sir, the triple.
18 points for Akinjo here in the opening half. Almost half of Baylor's points against Northwestern State. Seven to shoot. And Northwestern State hasn't been able to hit that rim in recent memory. The passes that have been off the mark, the shot a little short. Over 600 victories in his career. Mike McConathy, all within the state of Louisiana. Former Louisiana Tech Bulldog. Oh, whoa. Oh. An 11 nothing run for the Baylor Bears. And boy, if I can uh, give the architects of the new Foster Pavilion some advice, give these folks a little more room to dance during commercial breaks. <laughs> oh. Dohan's going to the free throw line. Uh, Kendall Coleman was not interested in a flush and being on the wrong end of a poster being printed up in the mezzanine. Yeah, I was looking forward to that one. I was going to jump out of my seat for that one. No, he didn't really want it. He, <laughs> didn't, he didn't really want to dunk it. He, he didn't want the poster. He thought he was trying to trying to pad his free throw stance? Yeah, he was trying to get to the free throw line. He didn't really want the dunk. So hands 12 of 25 coming into tonight. He's now a 50% career free throw shooter, first year freshman. Not sure what that is in metric. In Sohan, a member of the Polish national team. As a result, plenty of competition has helped mature him against grown men. Mm. And end of the drought, courtesy of T-Set, who knocks down another triple. T-Set has been instant offense for Northwestern. They might as well keep my man in the game the whole time. He sets three to four from beyond the arc. Let's we'll see what else he can give them. As Baylor pulls some back. Look, I'm running to play for T-Set. Come off, get the ball, shoot it. No matter where you are, shoot it. He said averaging about nine points. Mentioned put up 15 against Texas A&M. Has nine tonight already in the opening half. Shot clock at three. There was one fan trying to help out Northwestern State by counting down the shot clock, but I think they were in the wrong time zone. You got to give that one up, Kendall. You had a two-on-one fast break. That's not time for a Euro. Give it up to your teammate. Get the assist. Keep it rolling. And crossing over on the inbounds play, a turnover. <laughs> yeah, you couldn't move because it was a dead ball. Wasn't off a back basket. Had to be stationary. Good call by the ref. Our officials are usually nice enough to tell them in advance whether they can. <laughs> My guy didn't listen right there. Michael Greenstein on that baseline, working tonight's game with oh. Jerry Pollard and Amy Bonner. Jerry Pollard with the foul call this time. Keep us on this end. We are told Homer Drew again recruited uh, Mike McConaughey. That surprises me. I, I shocked me. I was a little probably a long time ago. <laughs> I can confirm it was not recent. Again, Mike McConathy, one of the eight longest tenured coaches in D1, and we know he's, he's going to move up at least one spot with Coach K, uh, supposedly calling it a career after this year. This is the seventh game for Northwestern State against teams that, oh, wow. Carvel T-Set, have yourself a birthday. Fourth three-pointer for T-Set. Look, if I'm Northwestern, I'm giving the ball to T-Set and let him rock out. T-Set leads the charge. Away from Akinjo. Oh, yeah, goodness. of course it went in. Oh, my goodness. 
goodness. And it's just his fifth game back with his teammates, just his third start. No sign of rust. I told you, T-Set is a baller. This guy right here is feeling it. Blackler trying to pull three back. He does. <laughs> 13 points oh, for Flagler. No. Oh, that's how he's feeling. Steph Curry. Yeah, they say some folks, when they get out of the team <laughs> bus in the parking lot, they're within their range. T-Set was trying to test that out. Oh, was, that man thinks he's Steph right now, huh? Sohan. Five points for Sohan in his first start to go with six rebounds. Look, I'm honestly not even mad at that shot he said just, just hit. I mean, he just hit two in a row, hit four. Honestly, if I was him, I would shoot it from the same range. But he said five of seven from the three-point line with his last miss. That one gets away. Kendall Brown keeps it in play. Tom with Chachua. Able to hang up there long enough as the Kencho finds him at the rim. Good look. Not a great pass, but it got the job done. That's all that matters. Approaching the final minute of the opening half. That lane cleared up briefly. Oh. The foul on Tom with Chachua is going to lead to free throws for Kendall Coleman. Coleman, another one of these second-year freshmen and an everyday starter for Northwestern State just about. Again, before Carvel Tset rudely interrupted me with one of his many three-pointers. Northwestern State, they're 3-10, and ten, but this is their seventh game against what we would call in football a Power 5 or the American Athletic Conference level competition. And when you're a coach and you schedule this aggressively, you're just hoping your players are mature enough to go into conference play with a fresh slate. Yeah, I mean, it, it honestly makes you better in a sense. I mean, yeah, you're taking losses, but you're playing against competition, quote unquote, better than you. So because you're playing against high level competition game in game, now you've seen it, the competition is not going to be nearly as good in your conference. Therefore, when you get to conference play, you're ready. A lot of it is, frankly, just size. They are not going to see some teams as big as the ones they're seeing this first half of the season. That's honestly the biggest difference is the size. I mean, you're right. At, at, from the, the three-man on to the center, those guys are like 6'7", six, 6'8", six, and, and, and above. Dale, yeah. Dale Bonner in the ball game for Baylor. Sohan. He's got seven points this half. T-Set is on the bench, will not be hitting a three-pointer on this possession. But in his place, the team's basically number three-point guard, Amarion McDonald. Out of Cachata, Louisiana. John Machachua testing his range. Shot clock is in effect one final time. But Flagler's going to milk it just about all the way down. Baylor will not be able to stretch the lead to 30. As the Demons should be able to get the final look here. It's a half where Baylor gets 18 from Akinjo, along with five assists. Black Knights last year, because of the pandemic, they played Gonzaga on the 21st, went to the airport to take on two days later Washington State. While they're at the airport, they get a call from Gonzaga say, our opponent fell through. Do you want to come back? play another contest they did and sure enough played them even tighter still lost but went to Washington State the next night and played the Cougars within 10 points three games in three days last year two of them against the number one team in the nation for these demons of Northwestern State as Baylor trying to pick up where they left off in that first half Adam Flagler that's his fourth triple Ian Akinjo with seven Successful strokes from beyond the arc. 
And King is still receiving bait goods at the scorer's table <laughs> from his adoring fans here in Waco. Good block. Oh. Three on one. Use the rim to your advantage, and you go to the free throw line. Jalen King, 12 of 17 this year from the charity strike. Another look. Good take right here. Able to use the rim as your friend. You say go to the free throw line. Shot. That first foul for Brown. King started his career at South Georgia State. We're seeing a lot of JUCO transfers that technically are just sophomores despite playing two years in JUCO. So you bring in a guy who's been seasoned, come into your lineup, but you take advantage of that free year of eligibility. You see some of these JUCO guys get to be on campus for three years or more. That gives you an extra year of experience and honestly makes a lot of teams better because you know what they say, the older teams are the better teams. Sohan again, first career start. Ooh. No foul. Well, international flight goes crashing down, but I think they're going to meet them halfway and just say ball touched last by Northwestern State. You be the judge. No foul right here. That is clearly a foul. Off the screen, three no. Now the rebound brought in by LT Reed. And Reed's a guy who's going to be undersized against uh, these opponents in non-conference, but is probably going to see his numbers improve. He's sixth-year senior once he hits conference play. T set. Yeah, had no business going inside the three-point line. Man, had no business passing right there, bro. So only yeah. thing, only thing to be on T set's mind is scoring. <laughs> He does have two assists in that first half, but those didn't make that highlight reel that our producer put together. <laughs> Who cares about passing when you can get buckets and shoot like Steph? Kids, cover your ears. <laughs> Uh-oh. Carvel, T-set. Time to ignite the bench right behind him. That one doesn't go down, but he'll stay here with Northwestern State. The unfortunate thing for T-set and Northwestern State is that you have a halftime, right? In T set, normally when guys get hot in the first half, they normally do not continue that same hot streak in the second half and they cool down. Let's see if he's one of those guys. That's when you tell coach, I'm going to just stay out here. <laughs> Good oh. feed inside, but a double team on Kendall Coleman, unable to flush it. Coleman's actually familiar with a couple of these Baylor players. We'll have more on that in a little bit. They try to feed Coleman and foul underneath on Thamba. Flo Thamba, the only returning starter from last year's national championship team. And that has made the job performance all the more impressive for that man. He would have had every excuse not to have his team sitting at number one here in the final poll of 2021. Instead of plucking Juco transfers, he plucks uh, first team all Pac-12 players. And uh, sprinkling in some young freshmen like Mr. Sohan. Oh. Akinjo, one on one. Akinjo, one on none. That was too easy. You got to put your body in foul right there, do something, but you can't just get blown by on a one-on-one -on -one play. A 7-2 start for Baylor here in the second half. Now I'll point out that's two more points than Stanford had for about the first half of the second half. A tie up between Sohan and Garrett. Moment to go. The steal. The finish. Just too easy. Below right by. Like he wasn't even there. Seems rude. 20 points for Akinjo. T 
Batista. And again, looking to get teammates involved. No, sir. Rejected by Thamba. Brown the other way. Oh. And a scary fall for Kendall Brown. Free throws pending. For again, your preseason freshman of the year in the Big 12 out of Minnesota. Great block right here. Looked like he might have been a little late, but no, sir. Not in Flo Thamba's house. And Thamba with the fingertips swatting that one away. Oh, Kendall Brown, a freshman, already with a veteran collegiate body. Get stronger. All right, Kendall Brown, I've been so impressed with his speed. I mean, everybody knew he could jump. But his speed, though, in, in transition on fast breaks, leading with the defense, getting steals, getting in the passing lane, and just sprinting to the rim. Been super impressed with that. I think it'll translate well in the next level. Five-star recruit. As Baylor's expanded its lead by six here in the second half. Western State looking for its first score in the past two and a half minutes. Oh, found a lane, and Bonner with a little precision poke goes off the demon on its way out of bounds. And Mike McCarthy will go back to his bench for some fresh legs. Only man who's going to stay out there is T set. Are you surprised? <laughs> so T set, we know this, at least one day younger oh, than no. his head coach. <laughs> and this is your new point guard, Thamba, right? <laughs> oh no, Flo. That's not you, that's not your game. T set with four fresh faces, including Brian White. Every other broadcast this year, I think, has mentioned it, so I feel like we have to. Brian White at 5'6 is the shortest Division I player this season. Doesn't seem that short. Here's White. Can't get it to go. The rebound for Akinjo. Oh. Follow-up slam from Kendall Brown, who throws it down. Man, Kendall made that look so easy. Like, he just graced for the putback. And Brown got a little poke there on T-Set as he went by, pinned the ball to his... Back in Waco here on Big 12 now, where Baylor has outscored Northwestern State to start the half 10-2. About to have a chance to stretch that here as James Akinjo at the line has made all three of his free throws tonight. And his teammates seven of nine from the line. Now 80% as a team. Lincoln Rose, King McClure with you. Great to have you with us. Final men's game of the year for Baylor. Well, they shift focus to the Big 12. Of course, the women will be in action tomorrow night. We thought it was going to be against a Southland Conference opponent in Houston Baptist. That date fell through. Though instead, uh, Nikki Collin was able to, at the last moment, get some folks from Conference USA to come on down from Denton. This will be the mean green against the green and gold. It will be tomorrow night on ESPN+. Plus. And that's a nice look coming out of the break from Zellin Baba. That was a tough shot right there, a footwork there. Step back and knock down a tray. Jovan Selenbaba out of Israel. Again, one of the international players from Northwestern State. Sohan. Didn't put enough English on it. We're going to stay here as Owens called for the foul against Jonathan Chama Chachua. Sohan, a point shy, being the fourth bear in double digits. Owens comes through with the swan. And 
Zellin Bamba, defended by Flagler. Knocked down a three-pointer his last effort. This one poked out of bounds into the Northwestern State bench. It'll stay here. Mike McConathy about as good as it gets within the state of Louisiana for decades. 39th year as a head coach. Previously he was at Osher Parish. Now the 23rd year with the Demons. And pass right into the arms of Sohan. Good pass. Give and go oh, oh, and a oh, tough oh. foul. Sohan comes down on his tailbone. Oh. No ill will on the foul, but thankfully Sohan able to pop back up. Yeah, definitely wasn't an intentional. He definitely was trying to go for the ball. Yep. Just happened to ball bad. I'm glad he got up, though, because that looked a little, a little painful. If he doesn't feel it now, probably tomorrow. <laughs> Right, you always feel those hard falls in the morning. I don't know why that is. I don't know why you just can't instantly feel the pain, but you gotta wait a day to feel the pain. Wake up in the morning that you just have some good sleep and you can't even walk. Oh, and a double dribble. Definitely something. Marion McDonald with the turnover. And he was one of the players who stepped up while T-Set was out the first semester. McDonald's a three-star recruit, arguably one of the better recruits Northwestern State's brought in over the past decade. They're excited about his future. Through Ooh, oh, my goodness. Jonathan Chamwachachua has had no shortage of those moments in his career in Waco. Just throw it up to the big fellas. Throw it up to Kendall Brown. It doesn't matter who. Anybody over 6'7 on this Baylor team, just throw it up, and they, I promise they'll go get it. Now, when Jonathan arrived, that was one of the few things you could do. Lob it to him above the rim, but he's continued to grow his game. Blackler finds Bomber in the corner. The pride of Shaker Heights, Ohio. Transfer from Division II Fairmont State. Able to play with the big boys on the number one team in the nation. <laughs> and that ball is retired for the rest Man, of the night. And what are you thinking right there? I know he saw Jeremy Sohan and all six nine of him. When someone right says there. their block was all ball, this is the standard. <laughs> Especially when you below five, eight. Brian White. And Owens able to recover it. Shot clock at four. And a uh, touch yeah. foul on Sohan on the perimeter there. That's the right call right there. Jimmy Sohan put two hands on the defender. Should have just let him go by. Only one second on the shot clock. Not a smart foul. So it's a 6 0 run. It's also a 14 3 run over the past five and a half minutes for Baylor. Growing this lead from halftime up to 40 now. Again, this will be a tough out in the Southland Conference for teams facing Northwestern State. Yeah, they're going to be really good in that conference. I mean, when you look at the guys who they get to play against and all the guys who they have played against, I mean, they're, they're, they've gotten better. And this is a tough team for their, for their league. And they, they should be very competitive and maybe win it. We've seen schools like Nichols, Southeastern, New Orleans, all in the state of Louisiana in contention for that automatic bid to the NCAA tournament out of the South in recent years. Northwestern State likely in that mix as well this year. McDonald. Ooh. A confident finish from Amarion. Tough floater right there. Sohan open long enough to nail that one. As Genty was late to close on him. Good pass. A great closeout, honestly. And Sohan 
Sohan defending on the other end. Marion McDonald, we mentioned he's the understudy for Carvel T set. We're taking some some plays out of T set's book right there. Pulling up from the logo. Actually, we're high school teammates. McDonald transferred in to the four-time state champions, but had to sit out that semester when T set was a senior. McDonald the next year led them to the high school state championship. Finishes a runner-up. Left-hander won't go. Akinjo, 21 points with the game high. Akinjo, 23 points with the game high. Tough layup right there. Flo Thamba and Kendall Brown about to check back into this ball game. All of 6'10 and 6'8 respectively. Northwestern State and Baylor colliding tonight, but some of the players are already familiar with one another. Kendall Coleman, one of the starters for Northwestern State, was actually teammates with a couple of Baylor Bears and L.J. Cryer, as well as Zach Loveday. In fact, it was a member of Scott Drew's staff, Bill Peterson, who coached this team in North Macedonia, part of Athletes in Action. Love that it brings those men together. Actually, on an athlete's in action trip, my sophomore year, we went to Poland. We went to Poland and uh, Germany. I got to see. Uh, oh, I'm gonna sound so stupid when I say this. Where did Hitler and where, all the stuff happen? Were y'all ranked by any of the polls? No, <laughs> Auschwitz. There we go. Went to go see Auschwitz. Bonner transition and a flush. Hey, you get to see parts of the world that you may not have otherwise gotten to see. Yeah, pretty cool what basketball can provide you. Uh, it's a super group, super cool uh, organization. They do a lot for basketball players, like you said. Look from the, the corner is good, and the birthday boy is uh, getting closer to once again to being a demon on fire. They yeah, take you to places you would never thought you'd see. And it's a Christian organization, so that our athletes in action. He set six three-pointers now, five in the first half. Lincoln Rose, King McClure with you tonight. Don Morris resting his voice for his 404th consecutive radio call for Baylor football when the Sugar Bowl takes place this next month. 400. Boy. Demo. 2024 Foster Pavilion just on the other side of the majestic Interstate 35 will be the new home of Baylor men's and women's basketball. That's going to be nice. I wish I could have played in there. <laughs> Does the NCAA not give you an extra year of eligibility like everybody else? Listen, I wish because I surely would have taken it. That, again, all the renderings, and it's the job of renderings to look good, but everything you've read, everything people have talked about, it has been, uh, a lot of thought has been put into that venue. No shortage of great memories still uh -oh. to be made here. Uh-oh. We've got to lock it up. At the Ferrell Center. Oh! Tomo Chanchua trying to ring in the new year. Bonner. Blocking it away, Akinjo. Akinjo just looks the defender off. Thirty-four fast break points for Baylor, and there's the aforementioned Kendall Coleman again, who spent time with L.J. Cryer and Zach Loveday offseason speaking of Mr. Loveday back in Waco here on Big 12 now a lot of kids uh, probably unwrapped some basketballs or maybe even some new kicks 
on December 25th. Getting to watch the number one team in the nation and uh, Baylor statistically, you see some of the categories where they are top 10. Again, this has not been against a fluff non-conference schedule. At Battle for Atlantis, three teams in three days. Very impressive right there. Baylor just take care of business, picking up where they left off last year. Thank Love Day comes on, the seven-foot sophomore. When he puts his arms out like that, I know it makes uh, the airport over there at Lake Waco a little nervous. The other way with Jordan Turner. Three-pointer for Flagler. He's got 19 points, second on the team behind Akinjo's 25. A foul will keep it here after the T-set miss. With that miss, T-set still 6 of 10 from beyond the arc tonight for Mike McConaughey's team. And they'll step into conference play in the new year. Members of the Southland since 1987. They have a couple of regular season titles, three tournament titles. Those are the more important ones because those are the ones that carry the automatic bid to the NCAA tournament. Last going to the big dance in 2013. The last postseason, I believe, was 2015 in the CIT. to beat the five count. A long two is good for Coleman and the second year freshman. Flagler from the elbow. Oh, good pace right there, coming off a ball screen, split the screen, rise up with a jumper, good pace from Adam Flagler. Got the double-double, 21 points, 10 assists tonight for Flagler. Zohan, in his first career, started double-double, 13 points, 10 boards. And a demon sandwich. Baylor comes away with the basketball. Turner. Looking to make it a baker's dozen from downtown for Baylor tonight. Sohan just a step late and is able to get that ball off the glass to go. Kendall Coleman. A baker's dozen. I have never heard that. What, is, what, what does that even mean? Where does that come from? Find a donut shop. <laughs> and if the, if the baker likes you, they'll put, a, they'll put an extra one in there. <laughs> never heard that before. Got to use that one. Yeah, remember th the number 13 with donuts is good. Number 13 with hotel floors, not so much. <laughs> T set sends it inside, and things starting to click for Kendall Coleman. The more I think about it, I don't think any baker has ever liked me because I have never had an extra donut in my box. I don't think any baker looks at you in your waistline and thinks, oh, this is a guy who's going to keep us in business. <laughs> Baylor over the century mark tonight, and this will be a backcourt violation. Not touched by Baylor. Kinjo tonight, 25 points, 9 assists, 5 rebounds. And for Baylor, they'll go two aims on ESPNU for New Year's Day. Three days later, right here against Oklahoma on ESPN2. 
Northwestern State heads. We mentioned west of Houston. So whose time is it? Back on Big 12 now. The village people in YMCA always a popular hit, regardless of generation. Cool. Really need to spell out more songs and lyrics. <laughs> well, the good news for Northwestern State is they're perfect from the free throw line tonight. The bad news is they've only shot five for Baylor. They've continued to get the line. Now 10 of 16 before that last one. Four players in double figure scoring for the Bears. Two men with double doubles and a couple more flirting with one. Defense. Lincoln Rose came McClure. Three and a half minutes to go here in regulation. Kinjo leading all scores with 27. Oh. To stay at 27 a little longer. We're going to turn right back around tomorrow. It'll be the 10th ranked women of Baylor hosting the Mean Green of North Texas. Oh. If he gets that ball over the rim, you think they blow the whistle? Uh -huh. Up by 40 right <laughs> now? No. No. Jordan Turner going to the line. Scott Drew has a mix of starters and reserves in the ball game right now. Inside three minutes to go, and... I'd be bragging if I could do that. If, <laughs> if you could get hung on the rim. Out of getting rejected by the net. <laughs> Not true with a good chuckle. McDonald. That's a mismatch. Over the seven footer. Amarion McDonald. Who is shooting a modest nearly 40% from beyond the arc this year. And a rejection. Courtesy of the left hand from Kendall Coleman. Baylor has not knocked down a shot in the last two and a half minutes. That one off of Love Day into the Baylor bench. Man, this game getting a little ugly right now. I would definitely take out my starters. You, you assume that Akinjo uh, not going to be in this ball game much longer. I wonder if he knows he has nine and six needs one more. Somebody should tell him. I think you're on to something. <laughs> Maybe five more rebounds. <laughs> and Akinjo uh, pulled the trigger on this one. I can whisper into his ear his box score. Full sidestep, looking for 30. Finds Turner. And the rebound sends McDonald the other way. Good passing. The Lesnar State able to execute. Inside the final two minutes. And we're about to see some fan favorites come on for the number one ranked Baylor Bears. <laughs> Could John Love and Mitchell Paul make their debut tonight on the evening? For Love, his third game of the season, just three minutes so far. For Paul, his fifth game. And on his NBA and accounting, the walk on. Not sure who's going to keep track of the stats now. To the corner. Thought about it. In and out. 
And here's Paul leading the offense due to popular demand. And Kajana Love still does not have a name on the back of his jersey. Got to give my man a jersey, man. He could have just took his brother's jersey. Brother yep. Langston Love out of the Montford Academy. As McDonald with the stroke. McDonald's had a sneaky good second half. 13 points for McDonald tonight against the number one team in the nation. Three rebounds, a couple of assists as well. That is second on the team behind his former high school teammate. T sets 18 points, five assists. Yeah, the story of how Langston Love injured, unable to suit up for Baylor this year, but his brother transfers in from down the road at Division II St. Edwards to help provide depth for Baylor. Open look for three. Just like in practice, knocks it down. That's Robert Hugas, a sophomore out.